Isaiah from Carnuba Detailing. Hope you're all having a wonderful day, just like always. As you can see, we have a change of setting today. We are not in the garage today because we are working on something special, at least to me, and that is my personal classical guitar. Now, I've had this guitar a little bit over five years now, and it needs a little bit of a spruce up. And I'm going to take it a bit to the extreme throughout this video. We're actually going to go ahead and ceramic coat this actual guitar and then top it off with bead maker. Um, and before that, we're actually going to go ahead and polish it out as well, try to bring that um, lacquer to a nice, glossy, shiny finish. Um, just wanted to do something different for you guys, see how our car detailing products kind of transfer over to the guitar scene and just see how it turns out overall. I thought it would be a pretty cool um, video for you guys. So the first thing we got to go ahead and do is maybe explain a little bit about the guitar to you real quick. So again, it's an Ibanez. I believe the name is AEG -A -E 10 NII. Um, it is a hybrid classical guitar, meaning it's a short neck, kind of like an acoustic but it's also a cutaway as well, something that you find more traditional with like a Spanish or flamingo guitar. Um, it has mahogany back and sides and then a spruce tangerine top with a mahogany neck as well. So this is a little bit about the guitar for you guys if you are interested. Again, I've had this for a little bit over five years. Still in great condition. I like taking care of my things like that, but we're gonna go ahead and make it even better. So let's jump straight into it. All right guys, so the first thing I'm gonna do is go ahead and remove the strings and you replace the strings anyways with some new ones. So we're just gonna go ahead and loosen them up. What I like doing is starting from the outside, so the E and the E, and then moving on to the inside, and I like to do it slowly. Um, remember this is wood, it's not metal. There's flex, there's um, a lot of change in pressure and tension and things like that. So you wanna make sure you do things slow um, so you don't warp anything. So we're just gonna go ahead and loosen the first E string up over here, work our way on the other side and kind of work our way inside, okay? Five minutes later. All right, so I forgot how long it takes to take off guitar strings. I was sitting there for like 50 minutes doing that, but at least we can fast forward through video. But now we're gonna go ahead and start cleaning things up a bit. I'm just using the Rag Company car detailing towel with a little bit of O&R as a quick detail. All right, guys, it doesn't have to be anything fancy. Now, please do remember, you have lacquer coated material and then you have porous uncoated material with the mahogany um, board right over here. So you wanna watch out for that. You don't wanna over flood or over saturate with any type of liquid. So if you're trying to clean that up, go ahead, spray it on your microfiber towel and then go ahead and start rubbing it down over there, all right? Don't need excessive pressure, guys. Just go ahead and make sure you prime your towel. Just like that and start cleaning the surfaces, all right? So now that we get the guitar nice and clean with Optimum No Rinse and our Rag Company microfiber towels, we're gonna to go ahead and jump into the polishing process. Obviously, you don't need to clay the guitar. There's not major contamination on the surface. Our main goal with Optimum No Rinse was to go ahead and just remove some body oils and some light dusting and dirt. But the next thing we're gonna go ahead and do is go ahead and polish. I'm gonna use two stages. The first one is gonna be Menzerna medium cut polish, and then also we're gonna finish it off with a Super Finish Plus, one of my favorite jeweling polishes on the market. The pads that we're gonna be using is a medium cut three inch foam pad from Buff and Shine, and then also their finishing pad as well, also in three inch sizes. We're gonna be using our Harbor Freight Dual Action Polisher. Now, things that we have to think about, guys, this is wood and it's also a lacquer surface, so we wanna make sure we don't heat up the surface a lot, so we're gonna keep those RPM lows. Low, excuse me, remember, just like paint, you have layers and each layer flexes differently under pressure and heat. Well, in this case, because it's lacquer, it doesn't have as high of temperature resistance as a vehicle clear coat or gel coat. And also you have to remember, wood heats up a lot quicker um, under pressure and under heat like that. So we wanna watch out for that. We're gonna keep it gentle. It's a fragile instru instrument. So you wanna make sure you play it safe. The last thing I wanna do is burn through this lacquer or anything like that. So enhance the gloss, enhance the shine, try to remove some of the swirl marks on the surface and marring, and that's pretty much it, guys. We're not chasing after a lot of stuff, all right? Before we start polishing, I just wanna show you guys a close-up visual of the actual surface. As you can see, we do have some swirls and some marring. Again, guys, it's a clear-coated surface. 
all right, or should I say lacquer. This stuff is gonna occur, and obviously when you get to the area where you're actually playing the instrument, there's a lot more marring and scratching that we have to deal with. And this is exactly why I wanna go ahead and remove those strings as well. It's just gonna make it a whole lot easier. Now we're gonna polish by machine, but we're also gonna polish by hand as well. Areas such as this is gonna be polished by hand, and also areas such as the bridge over here um, are gonna be polished by hand too. Now one thing to take note, there are electronics on this guitar as well, so you we wanna make sure you keep those vibrations and pressure to minimum. The last thing you wanna do is jostle this to a point where um, the pickup or mic falls off of the actual internals of the guitar, all right? That's just a whole nother process we need to get into if we need to fix that, so. So the moment of truth. So we just finished polishing it with a medium cut polish from Inzerna and then Super Finish Plus as well. The guitar looks great now. I would say about 65 to 70% of the defects and marring have been removed. The major defects are still there right over here where you're actually playing the guitar and you're smacking it and hitting it 24-7. So I'm not really worried about that, especially since I want to keep as much lacquer and coating or clear coat, whatever you want to call it, on that surface area right there so it doesn't diminish over time. But today we're going to go ahead and use McKees 37. The reason why, this is probably one of the most forgiving coatings on the market that I've used so far. Super easy to use. If you do run into a high spot, you still have a few minutes to go ahead and buff it, I mean, put it down with a microfiber towel and some quick detailer. So um, it's, it's a simple product to use. I just want to see how it works on the surface of the guitar, just as an experiment. You know, it's, it's my guitar, I want to see what happens, you know? So we're gonna get straight into it in the application on the guitar. I'm gonna take it through the same application I would on a car, do section by section, wipe it down with two microfiber towels. I got the Rag Company Pearl Weave towel over here, great for coatings and things of that nature. So let's jump straight into it. Okay, so well, the ceramic coating process went pretty well. I mean, it applies very similar, similar to what you would find on a vehicle. And actually, the buff off with the pearl weave towels from the rag company was really easy. It was actually smoother than expected. Um, so from what I can tell right now, it's looking glossy, it's looking shiny. The ceramic coating did enhance the surface of the actual guitar and the lacquer very well. Um, and it's gonna get even better after it just cures for a few hours. So I'm gonna let it sit here for an hour or so and then come back 
of course, with the Eagle Edgeless and a bottle of Bean Maker, and then top it with that. Just give it a little bit more pop and shine. Um, but besides that, guys, that's the process. I mean, it's just experimenting. Like I said before, want to try something different, and I needed to go ahead and clean this thing up anyway. So, if you guys like the video, make sure to leave a thumbs up and subscribe. And if you have any questions at all, comment below. I'm more than happy to help, all right? Besides that, also check me out on Instagram. Follow, like my Facebook page, Carnuba Detailing. Tags are in the description below and also in the video. Thank you, like always, for watching, guys, and I hope you all have a wonderful day.